Welcome to week three of Play With Your Music. In this module, we'll be combining some of the analysis and ear training that we developed in the first couple of weeks and building our own mixes from multi-track stems. To continue focusing on just a few variables at a time, we're going to start by trying to recreate a mix using just volume level and panning. To do this, we have a browser-based HTML5 interface developed by programmer Kevin Ennis. This gives us a really simple mixer that can allow us to start interacting with the individual multi-track stems for air traffic by Claire Berry and Wooldog, which we explored a little bit in the first week. Now these stems are presented in mono, with all their original effects from the record printed or recorded wet and layered in with the original source track. Some of these instruments were originally recorded in stereo, so a mix put together in this interface will automatically sound a bit different than the final mix that appears on their record. To that end, we put together a new static mix of this song that we actually created using this very JavaScript mixer. And one of your assignments for this week will be trying to replicate that mix yourself. Let's look at some ways you might go about doing that. As we look at this interface, it looks a lot like a conventional analog or digital mixer that we might see in a sound system or a window of a digital audio workstation. We have faders to control the volume of each stem, pan pots to send each stem to one speaker or the other, and mute and solo buttons labeled M and S respectively. Solo lets us listen to a track in isolation and is also sometimes called Q or PFL which stands for pre-fader listen, because it allows you to listen to that track without the fader level affecting it at all. Sometimes you'll find mixers that also offer you AFL, which stands for after fader listen, and then you're just listening to that track in isolation, but with the fader level included. The PFL button on this interface doesn't actually work, so disregard that and stick to the S button if you want to solo up a track. Over here on the left, we see two tracks panned hard left and hard right. This is the reference mix that we put together for you to replicate. I would recommend leaving these muted and then just solo them up when you need to refer back to them. As you take a moment to listen to this mix, there are a few different ways you could consider replicating it. You could certainly just listen to the reference and start to work out your own version in the mixer, A being between the two until you find something that works or you could try breaking it down more analytically. You could go through and graph out the reference mix like the perceived space graph we looked at in week one. And because this is a static mix throughout the whole tune, you can make up just one single graph that would apply to the whole song. Then you could try to recreate that graph on the mixer and check your results by ABing against the reference mix. Or you could go through each instrument one by one listening to where it sits in the reference, and then bringing it up individually in the mixer. Once you have it sitting in a place that seems right, mute that channel so your settings remain, then isolate another instrument, mix that one, and so on. Once you've gone through that process for each instrument, you can make a few tweaks to your entire mix to match the original. There may be certain sources, like the baritone guitar or timpani, for instance, that only happen for short intervals during the song. You may want to isolate those sections so you can go over them a bunch in quick succession. There's an easy way to do that by digging into the URL where all your mixer settings are stored. You'll see a setting for min time and max time, which are marked in seconds. You can use these to isolate a certain section. For instance, if you want to place the baritone guitar part, you could enter a min time of 130 and a max time of 155. Then refresh the page. Now your transport control at the bottom will only run from 210 to 235, which times out great for this baritone guitar part. You can listen to it multiple times in a row while you get the settings just right. After you've put together a convergent mix that replicates our reference mix, copy that URL, which saves all your mixer data, and paste that into a post to your learning ensemble. Discuss the process you went through in assembling your mix. What gave you troubles? what came easily, and now that you've had access to the individual multi-track stems, were there things you heard in the song that you hadn't heard previously? After that, take an opportunity to put together a creative mix of your own. Would you prefer a mix that has more drums and less piano? 
Would you have panned the pedal steel and the piano to opposite extremes? Go for it. Copy and paste this URL into that same discussion and talk about why you made the decisions you did. Next week, you'll have an opportunity to build another mix of this song, starting from the dry stereo stems in the online browser-based DAW, Soundation. Here, you'll be able to explore all sorts of different audio effects and apply them creatively to have even more control over the mix. And then finally, in week five, we'll take an opportunity to completely remix the song, changing the arrangement, adding loops, recording new parts, and hopefully bringing your own ideas from your favorite genres to remix the song in a way that re reflects your creative vision. While we're here, we have an opportunity to discuss a couple of other important characteristics of audio that you may stumble upon while using this interface. First, to make this fast loading and easy to use, the stems you're listening to in this player are 128 kilobytes per second MP3s, which are significantly smaller file sizes than the original 24-bit 88.2 WAV files from the original masters. What this means to us as mixing engineers is that we may hear artifacts of the data compression in these tracks we're mixing. These algorithms have become very advanced, but when we're making or mixing master recordings, we make sure to use the best possible resolution available to preserve as much of the original performance detail as possible. You may have also encountered some funky sounds if you happen to listen to the reference mix and also bring up some of the individual stems at the same time. The timing of the original mix, where it starts and where it ends, is off by just a few samples from the individual stems themselves. It could be as little as two one hundredths of a second, an amount so small that we wouldn't recognize it as a distinct echo because our hearing mechanisms only acknowledge distinct delays above about 20 milliseconds. Instead, we hear the waveforms from this mix and the stems start to interact and swing in and out of phase with one another. This is sometimes referred to as phasing or phasiness, which has even become an effect that mixers use intentionally. When we're recording sounds, we often try to avoid this effect of a single source arriving at a different time to two separate tracks by thoughtfully placing microphones, electrically inverting the phase of one of the microphones, or timelining the tracks in a DAW. You can read more about the physics of sound and how waveforms interact acoustically and electrically in the links provided. These are all important factors to keep in mind as you produce tracks of your own. For instance, when you're building a remix and using two different kick drum samples at once, it's possible to introduce some phase issues that would actually pull power out of your kick drum sound. If you make sure to have the two samples line up in phase with one another, they can complement each other and make for a nice, powerful kick drum sound. So build your two mixes. First, the convergent mix, trying to replicate the reference mix that we put together. And second, a creative mix that is all your own. Copy and paste the URLs of your results into a discussion with your learning ensemble. As you listen to your mixes and those by other people, Challenge yourself to listen deeply and notice subtle changes. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you have questions about this or any of the other projects or modules, reach out to the Google Plus community. We're monitoring those channels, so hopefully we can help you with questions. And also your classmates and members of your learning ensemble can hopefully help answer some of those questions. And they may have some of the very same questions. Um, we've loved seeing all the projects that you've been submitting and we're excited to see uh, the more creative projects as these come together and you get to play with your music more. Thanks very much. Have fun.